So when you bake in value and bake in opponents, there were two names that popped to me. Um, I was considering Miles Garrett, and he's 13. The problem is he's three back with three games left, right? Right. Uh, Houston, Jets, Cincinnati. And actually, the Cincinnati one was the reason that I was not considering the bet. And they might have their five spot locked in. And I don't know that Garrett's going to be playing that last game of the year. And Browning, he's been getting rid of the ball lately. So, like, he hasn't been sacked a ton. There were a couple of games where he had, like, three or four sacks. Um, right. But that's not the one that jumped out to me. The one that jumped out to me has better odds than Garrett, but a little bit closer to Watt. And that's Paul's guy. Josh Allen at 11-1. to mm. So he has 13 and a half sacks, two and a half back, and he's got Tampa, Carolina. Keep in, yet, keep in mind that Bryce Young has taken the second most sacks. Everyone talks about Howell, but Bryce Young has taken a ton of sacks too. And then closing the season with Tennessee, quarterback, I don't know, big question mark. Maybe it's Levis. See what Levis did this week? He took seven sacks. I think right. Josh Allen's in a good spot. I think it's a great spot. I'm a big fan of that one. Not to mention, Micah Parsons was someone, like you said, like he's got a bit of a deficit to make up. So that's a big deal. But also, too, like we learned a valuable lesson on Sunday. Sam Howell can get benched. Some of these other mm. quarterbacks you're talking about, like Bryce Young and company, they're not getting benched. I think that is safe to say. But Howell can get yanked. And if that's the case, then Parsons – abilities and potential to accrue just a ton of sacks in that week 18 game they may not be there now so i want a longer number if i'm going to invest in that possibility and at nine to one i just don't like it um mm -hmm. other thing too is that if you are looking at say you know miles garrett at nine to one here um this one could be valuable zach wilson has a really high sack rate uh still has to face the browns and so that's important uh, or rather, you know, Browns face the Jets, Zach Wilson, high sack rate. Uh, but then, you know, the other games do offer some possibilities there. I think also what matters is if you look at, say, how many sacks a defender can get. Right now, Khalil Mack uh, has most sacks in a game at six. All these other yeah. guys only get like three, three and a half in a game. That was an outlier performance. So is it safe to say that if you're trailing in this market, there isn't that much time left to make up the deficit. Yep. Yeah, no, uh, this is interesting now because there are ways to find value and it's easier to look at path and possibilities. Mm -hmm. Like I, I like jumping in these markets with uh, about a month left. I love tomorrow night, so let's get right after it. Uh, the Los right. Angeles Rams. Uh, this spread is too short for me. The Rams are playing as well as anyone on offense right now in the NFL, in particular Matthew Stafford uh, on throws 10-plus yards downfield the last four or five weeks. is top 10 in literally every metric we track. And yards per attempt, big-time big throw rate, um, PFF grade, you know, all, all these various elements. He's been so good throwing down the field. And Marshawn Lattimore now sounds like, as of a couple hours ago, not expected to play. Uh, which is huge, of course, for the Saints. And they're 23rd in pass rush win rate. Like They're not a very good defense like they've been uh, against the pass in years past. They are good against the run. Uh, they always seem to be good against the run, but they're susceptible up the middle. And I think I love that, too, that their interior defenders are not good. Um, and this new gap scheme from McVay, like they're going to run between the tackles with Kyron Williams. It's been very effective. I just Every matchup I find in this game, I love for the Rams – Chris Olave mm -hmm. might not play again. Ryan Ramchick might not play again. I think those are up in the air still. But, yeah, give me the Rams tomorrow minus four is my favorite bet of the week. I, I, I know what they're thinking. Like, we talk about it all the time when you have mm -hmm. that fired coach bump. And, okay, everybody in the building is, is you know, on edge a little bit. Are, am I next? Sure. Am I going to get fired? I'm going to prove that I deserve to stay here. Or maybe I should mm -hmm. be considered for some kind of an interview. I mean, that that's what it is. And then it's a wake-up call to the players. Or is it? I don't know. Did they dislike Staley? I have no idea. No clue. Um, yeah. So I, me I, I don't know what, I don't know what we're going to see out of this. I don't know. I just know that the bills are on the other side and that offense is really scary. And the Chargers defense is so pathetic at this point. Mm -hmm. I'm, pr I'm not taking the points. I'm not. 
the one, if you're taking the politics and the head coaching stuff out of the equation, the one way I could see the Chargers getting, say, a backdoor cover and say losing yeah. by 10 or something like that is if you are assuming that the Bills are going to come in and say, you know what, this Chargers run defense is actually pretty decent. It's the pass defense that's yeah. been oh so terrible. Josh Allen will have to throw a little bit more. And look, he can be turnover prone at times. If that happens, then maybe Easton Stick gets a couple of short fields, and maybe that's how L.A. stays in this game. Not going to win, but it could be some kind of a backdoor cover where, okay, they keep trying to run the ball, run the ball, and then at some point it just doesn't work, and then somehow the Chargers have a possession, you know, late in regulation where they're able to cut the deficit. So, Isaac, when it comes to, say, teams that we aren't talking about, that aren't playing in these high-profile early season tournaments, uh, is there a team that you feel like uh, can very well make a run in terms of winning a smaller conference, a mid-major, something like that, maybe even making the Final Four or winning the whole darn thing? Man, that's a great question. You know, a couple of the teams that stand out from the mid-major angle, uh, Grand Canyon has been playing phenomenal basketball right now. That's an interesting team I'd watch. I don't know if that's a team that can make a deep, deep run in March, but they have Tyon Grant Foster, one of the best stories in college basketball this year. He was a former number one Juco guy. He went to Kansas, didn't work out there, suffered a heart, um, basically had a, like a heart issue at DePaul, didn't play for two years. Now he's coming back and he's averaging 22 points a game. Like this is a pro who's playing for Grand Canyon. So that's the teams that I'm kind of looking at, those mid-major teams that have – elite elite talent high-end talent so then colorado state's another one that i think would qualify as well isaiah stevens you could put him in the conversation for the best point guard in college basketball so for those type of teams that i'm looking for those th those are like the benchmarks i'm looking for because you need to have a dude if you're at that mid-major ranks you're probably not going to have the high-end talent but grand canyon has gone into the portal and gotten multiple power six transfers colorado state has one of the best coaches in the country has one of the best point guards in the country has gone into the portal and gotten multiple power six players so those are the types of teams that i'm looking at from the outside the the power six that could potentially make some noise in march isaac when i look at last night and uh what we saw happen in college hoops one thing that uh, certainly came to mind was home court as uh you try to figure out what is it worth and we had some spots where you know a team like virginia with their first true road game of the year they get smoked by memphis memphis was it was two and a half earlier uh in the day when we were talking about it i uh, ended up closing three and a half they cover with ease. And then Marquette, they were a short road favorite. And then they get smoked by Providence. What did you think about those results? Yeah, the, the the Providence one doesn't really surprise me a ton. Providence is phenomenal at home. I think they're 40 and three now at home in their last 43 games. That's just kind of unbelievable. But I think it in the Big East, so to speak, I think it shows that this might be a little bit more than just a three team race. You know, I think a lot of people have thought it's UConn, it's Marquette, it's Creighton. And I think a ton of people thought Villanova could potentially be that fourth and myself included in the beginning. But I, I think Providence has shown that they're going to be a team to be reckoned with. Devin Carter's jump is real. I think he's a, another NBA guy. Now that his shooting is legit, he was all over the place last night for Providence. And if he's an NBA guy and Bryce Hopkins is an NBA guy, you know, I think there's still some questions about Kim English, their first year head coach, but that's a team that can really challenge for it. I still think, you know, in the Big East that it's it's UConn has been looked like the best team, but I think Creighton's really, really good too. And so like, if you could get a good longer number on them, like I think they're plus 275 in a lot of spots right now, maybe even plus 300 in some spots. I still think that they have a chance to, to potentially win this league. And I think it showed a little bit of the, maybe not the, you know, like I, I like Marquette. I think Marquette's a really good team, but I still think that there's some questions with them too. And some of their issues got a little bit exposed yesterday, especially from a depth perspective and who's their third score. That's still been a, a real question all year. And I think it could hold them from, from winning a league that's, you know, we know is going to be really, really good at the top.